Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how to connect an MVC.NET 6 uh, app slash website to an SQL Lite database. Now, unfortunately, I've been a bit of an idiot and deleted our project, but since it was just a fresh one, we're going to start a new. While I get that started up, you guys should head over to sqlite.org and download under your environment here. If you're on Windows like me, then you want to download this sqlite tools, uh, Windows 32, 286 thing. You download that and extract it and put it, for example, like I did on C sqlite. Then you type in path here and the search, and it should come up with edit the system environment variables. Yes, environment variables, path, edit, and then add the shortcut to whatever you where you put the SQLite. This will enable us to create an SQLite database in any place with the command SQLite3. So let me start this up. Miniature collection. Our web. Yep. So in order to keep this uh, short and not too long, we're going to use something called scaffolding to cr automatically create our views and uh, interactions, our collaborations with the database. Now, in a perfect world, perfect world, I mean, I'm deciding the content here, but I would show you how to manually do it, and I might do that, but I want to keep this a bit short, and I want the focus to be on uh, connecting to a database. Um, so, now this is identical almost, I don't know if the name was identical, but this is how our other project looked. And I'm thinking to begin with, to get it out of the way, let's install the NuGet packages that we're going to use. So right click and say manage NuGet packages. We're going to use something called entity framework to do code first database, which means that we don't actually have to know any database stuff to do database stuff. Entity framework is going to do it for us. So find this, this is microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sqlite. Click install. Except this is the first one we need. We need one more after this. Hot diggity, that was fast. Let's see if it pops up just by blanking it. Yep. Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. Now what this NuGet package does, the first one was to do the code first stuff. This one is to be able to do migrations from the command line in our package manager console. All right, perfect. Now we don't have to worry about uh, that stuff. So let's first connect uh, to the database, but we don't have any database to connect to. So let's create that. Right click, say open in terminal. Then we type SQLite3, which is the command to interact with database uh, SQLite3. Then we type the name. We're just going to call it database.db. Then you type dot databases. And as you saw after I wrote that, the database popped up over here. Then we can just quit this stuff here. Oops, dot quit. This you will be able to do from a command line also. You can do it anywhere and just copy it in the folder here. But the placement here is uh, inside our miniature collection web project. All right, I'm going to close this now. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is um, add a connection to this in our application uh, settings. So this one, open this one, and then you're going to type comma, connection strings, open this up, give it a name. This can be anything. I'm going to call it local DB. And then data source equals to database.db. So what this is now, 
this is for our application to be able to connect to our database. We're going to use this in our program, um, which is gonna we're going to tie it all together in the end in here. But for now, just uh, do this, and then we add our model. So, like I mentioned in the last video, our model is going to be the table in our database. So just create a class here, and we're going to call it mini minis miniature. Miniature, yes. I don't know why I, that's a hard word. Add. All right. So I'm going to start off here by adding some properties. The first one, oh, it's going to be ID, which was going to set as our primary key and the table also. We're going to want the name of the mini, yes. We're going to want a boolean to check if it's table ready. Gonna set this to default to false. Then we're gonna say description. Add a description. Description. That's not. Is that correct? Spell description. Looks correct. All right, so in order to make this the primary key, we add key data annotation. You can see a list of all the data annotations on the web. There's like stuff for ranges and all kinds of fancy nice stuff. For example, this required, which is gonna make it so that it has to be filled out this we could set to that it's nullable, so that it doesn't have to have any information. Since this is required, it's never going to be null. So you see here, non-nullable, we don't have to worry about that. Now, in order for this to get a nice display when we do the CRUD operations in the view, the scaffolding, we're going to say display name table ready. If we didn't put that here, it would be displayed like this table ready with no space. I would like the space. So now we have our model set up. What we want to do from here is create a database context, a DB context. Basically, what you need to know is that for every database, you need one uh, application DB context. And inside of that, we're going to create something called a DB set, which is basically for each model slash table in the database, you add a DB set. So right click here, we're going to put it in a folder called data and just add a new class and call it application DB context. Now this is going to inherit from db context. Press escape. Control dot to get the suggestions here using entity framework core AS plus. Then type sotor, ctor, tab twice. It's going to create the constructor first that we need. Then we're going to pass the options. This is something that's required, so just follow along. I thought I had it there. Nice. I'm going to remove this to have it a little nicer. Okay, so this constructor is required, so just have it like that. And let's not worry about that anymore. Then we're going to add property, a DB set for our model, which we called miniature. And now the name you put here is going to be the name of the table in the database. So we want this to be called miniatures. Save. All right. So far, so good. What is this word? Oh, phrase. Save all. Close. 
Okay. So now we have what we need to tie it all together. That's going to be done in here. Ooh. And as you remember, in the last video, I added the razor pages, which was going to be useful for hot reloading razor pages. So in order to pull everything together, we need to tell our uh, application here to use the DB context with our connection string to the SQL database. This is done in here in the program.css. Uh, program.cs. Jesus, I went front end for a minute there. That services, and then you're gonna say dot add DB context. Application DB context, yep. And then passing the options, options. And, uh, use SQLite. Yeah, use SQLite. Open this up. Builder.configuration. Dot get connection string. So this is getting our connection string now from our app settings, which we called local DB. So it's going to get this. Now, with this setup, we're able to create our first migration. If you don't have the package manager console open down here, go to views, other windows. Uh, package manager console. Open it up. Say add migration. Add miniatures table to DB. Now what's it going to do now? It is going to connect to the database after we run our migration and create this table. Uh, so here you see what's it uh, doing. So it's creating a table called miniatures with these properties, nullable true, so it can be empty. All right, this looks good. And then in order to run the migration, you say update database. Boom. Now we have actually created a table in our database, but it's empty. There's nothing in it. How do we add something to it? Well, via our website. So the last thing we want to do now is to basically use something called scaffolding, um, which is gonna automatically create all of our CRUD elements, our views and the controller. So right click your controllers, say add new scaffold item. Then you pick MVC controller with views using entity framework. Add. Then you choose our model, it's called miniature. The DB context and reference script life click off. We're going to keep this name, controller name, miniatures controller. Add. This is going to think a bit, and then it's going to add everything. Now, usually, if you know what you're doing, you I would actually, you should set this up manually, which is basically just create the controller and return the views. But because I want this to be a focus on the SQL light stuff, SQL light stuff, uh, we're gonna just use the automatic here. So now there's a bunch of stuff that you might be confused with, and I will uh, in a future video probably go over how to do these manually. But uh, that's not the focus on this video. So in order to just navigate this easily without having to do any sort of weird magic here, I'm going to copy this navigation point in our shared view. And then I'm going to say for the controller miniature, I believe it's called. Yes, miniatures. I'm going to say miniatures. And then the action we want is index. Save. Choose the ISX Express. Then we're going to start without the debugger. 
So now our website should start and we're going to be asked about this. We're going to say yes, we accept the risk. So we click miniatures. Ta-da! Well, not so much that I, we can't see anything, but we see here now it has created everything we want. So let's click create new name. Ty Ogre. How's it spelled? Ogre. I think it's spelled like this or something. Ogre Tyrant is a leader in Warhammer Age of Sigma. He is table ready. We're going to say. Yeah, first guy is going to be table ready. We're just going to create a new one. Let's say another leader. He's not table ready. Missing painting. Great. So now we have some examples you can see here. And let's say that I now, oops, I just painted in table ready. We can do this. Boom. And then if you just want to see details also, we can delete. Now, in the next video, I can show you how to easily attach a nice uh, view to all of this with Bootstrapper. Um, but that's going to be another video to set up some nice tables and stuff like this uh, if you're not a front-ender. And then maybe in some other videos, I'm actually going to show you how to build it all yourself. Uh, but the next video is going to be some Bootstrapper stuff and basic HTML. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps some of you out there to connect some databases to your projects. Um, if you actually use this for something, please let me know. Oh my God, fail because I was talking. But yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.